Uh, first, I will uh, again welcome you all to this webinar jointly organized by the GCSP. I'm Mark Fino, the head of arms proliferation at the GCSP, and we work with our partner, MITO, Middle East Treaty Organization, represented here, among others, by uh, its director, Paul Ingram, who will moderate this webinar. In this webinar, as I said, we will talk about the, the, the current issue, which is uh, the efforts of the international community to, uh, to revert to full compliance with the JCPOA by all its parties and including the United States, because it, uh, the Biden administration has promised to rejoin the agreement. And uh, obviously we'll look at impact in on regional security, global security, in particular the prospect of WMD free zone. And we will also, of course, look in particular at the role of the remain, remaining parties uh, in the JCPOA. Thank you, Mark. Can I, uh, can I turn now to Anton Klopkov, who uh, is the director of the Center for Energy and Security Studies in Moscow, and uh, also the organizer of the uh, Moscow Non-Proliferation Conference, which is a, a world-renowned uh, event. Uh, Anton, let me just pass to you to give the Russian perspective. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mark, for inviting me to join this warm-up session for the GCPOA uh, uh, Joint Commission, which is going to start in Vienna about the same time. Uh, first of all, it goes without saying, as my colleagues uh, just said, that the keys from the restoration of the GCPOA are in Washington and Tehran, and with no political will in both capitals, there is no chance to uh, restore the so-called Iran nuclear deal. The good news that it looks like uh, that nowadays uh, in both places, uh, uh, there is such a political will. And another good news that still uh, in both capitals, uh, there are a number of very experienced and highly professional uh, officials who have experience uh, of negotiating the GCPOA and uh, implementation of the GCPOA. I particularly mean, of course, a new U.S. administration which were able to assemble so many people with uh, uh, experience of negotiating the original deal in 2013, 2014, and 2015. So I would call it probably dream team. Uh, there are so many people in the State Department and the National Security Council in the Department of Defense and other agencies which are professional and uh, whom I hope uh, will do their best to uh, return the United States to the uh, GCPOA. Uh, having said that, I would like to uh, underline the importance of return to the original deal. Uh, as uh, Li Shijian just mentioned, I personally don't see any chances uh, uh, for the uh, parties of the deal to negotiate a new uh, uh, agreement, let's say GCPOA minus or GCPA plus, uh, due to legal issues. As we know, there is so called in our agreement, in our legislation in the United States, which will require a review of any new deal by the Congress, uh, unless uh, uh, all parties agree to return to the original one. And also, uh, I don't see uh, 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 any interest from Iran's side to negotiate anything new. So from that perspective, the goal must be uh, to return to the original deal. And my understanding, this is this is what uh, uh, countries and their representatives are going to discuss in the Vienna today and hopefully during the uh, upcoming weeks. What other countries, uh, uh, in addition to the United States and Iran, could do 
to assist uh, uh, restoration of the GCPOA. First, uh, uh, they can help to uh, initiate and structure the dialogue between the all parties. And this is, by the way, what is already going on. And, the, uh, and today's meeting is a good example of that. What is important uh, to uh, make this dialogue regular. As uh, I understand, there is no uh, decision in Tehran as of today to have a direct dialogue with US participation, but the good news that there are a number of countries, uh, EU, Russia, China, uh, which are, uh, which uh, are willing to uh, mediate the dialogue between the United States and Iran. So, I mean, this is the first area where other countries, uh, including Russia, could contribute. Second, of course, uh, this is about assistance to bring the Iranian nuclear program in the compliance with the GCPOA. We know well that during the recent uh, uh, months, uh, in return for U.S. Uh, withdrawal from the deal, uh, Iran uh, increased its stockpiles of low-enriched uranium. It's, uh, it established uh, and used uh, new types of centrifuges. It exceeded uh, uh, the amount of heavy water. It is allowed to have an accordance with the GCPOA. And there are some other areas uh, where Iran will have to be back to comply uh, with the uh, uh, terms of the GCPOA. Uh, and other countries uh, could provide either, uh, their assistance to Iran to make it happen, hopefully relatively quickly, uh, in return for US uh, uh, rejoining the deal. And the third area, this is about effective joint economic activities with Iran because uh, Iran should receive, uh, 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 should feel the results of the GCPOA and should feel the results of uh, hopefully US return to the deal, which means that economic cooperation with Iran as soon as US, the unilateral sanctions, uh, 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 removed uh, uh, economic cooperation with Iran should be uh, re-established relatively quickly. And this is the issue for the parties of the deal, but this is also an issue for uh, other countries which traditionally have close economic ties with Iran, especially uh, in oil, like for example, South Korea, like Japan, India, and some others. So uh, what about Russia? Uh, first, I would like to uh, remind what was the uh, nature of Russia's and the reasons for Russia's active involvement in the GCPOA uh, originally. Uh, first, of course, uh, this is about protecting and strengthening the non-proliferation regime and to prevent proliferation. And I, I'm not speaking on Iran, I, sp I speak broader on the Middle East and even beyond that. Uh, next, uh, and this is close to uh, what Tarja was uh, saying about the uh, European Union to prevent uh, military crisis close to the Russia's borders. It was another reason for Russia to be originally to be active in the negotiations. Third, uh, to create uh, a better climate, a better environment for economic cooperation with Iran because it's an open secret that in the current sanction environment, it is very difficult in some areas, almost impossible to cooperate with Iran and even a flagship uh, Russia-Iran project, which is a Boucher nuclear power plant that is going on, but having a US unilateral sanctions in place makes this cooperation much more complicated and much more difficult. Uh, and uh, the final uh, point I will mention here, but of course this list could be expanded uh, to strengthen the central role of the NPT 
IEA and UN Security Council when uh, we are trying to resolve the major non-proliferation uh, crises and, and the crisis around uh, Iran, uh, a nuclear program is uh, one of the current ones. Uh, uh, so this war, uh, the motivations for Russia to be creative, to be active, uh, uh, to be cooperative uh, during the original negotiations of, on GCPOA. And I don't think this motivation has changed since that. I do think that uh, those reasons are the same today as they were uh, more than five years uh, ago. And I would like to remind that Russian Iran political dialogue was and is very active. Uh, I should mention that Foreign Minister Zarif visited Moscow uh, during the last nine months, I think at least four times and altogether more than 30, time during, 30 times during his term as Iran. Foreign Minister Abbas Arachi, who is another lead negotiator of Iran nuclear uh, deal, also a frequent visitor to Moscow, and if uh, my recollections are correct, uh, visit at least twice uh, Moscow during the recent uh, months. Uh, and it uh, create opportunities for Russia to play a leading role as well as EU, as well as China, to uh, structure the dialogue between Iran and the United States with participation of other countries. And where the Russia's role in is unique, if we speak about uh, uh, restoration of the GCPOA, is to provide assistance to Iran to bring its nuclear infrastructure into compliance with the GCPOA. Russia uh, does have a necessary experience of uh, working uh, together with Iran in the nuclear field. Uh, Russia was critically important to assist Iran to remove excess of LEU uh, uh, from its territory uh, shortly after the original GCPOA uh, has been adopted. And I do expect that Russia could provide uh, a, a similar support if parties of the deal would be a original parties of the deal would be able to negotiate a so-called roadmap, a kind of that. Uh, I hope, and this is my uh, understanding from communication by uh, with colleagues both in Tehran and Washington, there is a good uh, level of understanding in both capitals uh, that uh, there is no chance for US to rejoin the deal first or to Iran to rejoin the deal first. Because again, due to narrow legislation, as soon as the US rejoined the deal, if Iran uh, has not returned to the full compliance by that time, within five days, President Biden has to report to the Congress about Iranian non-compliance and US Congress should block US participation in the deal. And of course, Iran will not be able to rejoin, uh, I mean, to be back to the full compliance with the deal due to political reasons. So this is about parallel steps from uh, both sides and my hope that other countries, uh, including Russia, including China, including EU, will be able to provide necessary assistance to negotiate uh, those steps. And probably my final point that, of course, time is running against us and with approaching Iran elect presidential elections, we don't have much time to uh, discuss uh, so-called roadmap or uh, uh, simultaneous steps from US and Iran side, which means that hopefully colleagues uh, who are in Vienna today and who will stay in Vienna for the upcoming weeks will be pragmatic enough and will not try to add something new uh, to the deal which was adapted in July 2015. I will stop here, thanks.